This summer, we had a very interesting study abroad program to the Dominican Republic. Uh, and it was very interesting because we had not only teachers and students being part of this program, but we also had a group of administrators and elected officials. That's a very impressive program that we put together in my office in collaboration with uh, Osos Community College to have our teachers and, and students uh, know the culture, the history, the idiosyncrasies of uh, the Dominican people is an added asset. So I'm happy to have uh, this agreement to put this program forward every year. And every year we take 20 or 30 students uh, and teachers. So we're very happy and proud of that. Um, visiting all the museums and seeing the art, the beautiful artwork, um, the historical sites that we saw in colonial Santa Domingo, um, the first uh, church of the Americas. It's all been just completely um, beautiful to see and eye-opening and I'm so excited to go back and share with my kids and when I say um, the Dominican Republic and they yell DR and I'll finally feel like I can connect with them and share stories and pictures with them from my experiences here. What happens with the program is that uh, the teachers attend Universidad Autónoma de Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic and they receive lectures from the best of the best. For instance, one of the lectures that the students receive is about Dominican identity. And as a result of that lecture by one of the professors at Universidad Autónoma, uh, students saw the need of going to do research and to be a, so that they could be able to understand better Dominican identity as a whole. So, I said, well, this is a big, big project, so I saw the need of inviting CUNY TV. For instance, uh, CUNY TV went to Sosua to document the Dominican uh, that, that have settled there and that have interacted with the Jewish migration. This is a community progressist, a community that has contributed a lot to the development of the people of Sosua. In 1938, the President Roosevelt made a conference in Evian, in France, with 32 countries of the world to help the Jewish from Europe. And then all said, sorry, sorry, but they didn't do nothing. The only country in the only country was the Dominican Republic, who offered 200,000 visa for Jewish in Europe. I'm Jew and I live in the Dominican Republic in Sosua. And my father, my grandfather came in the, to Sosua in the war, in the World War II, by the persecute of, of Hitler. Here we can find the, the peace that in other place we didn't find. CUNY TV also recorded uh, the migration of Puerto Ricans to the Dominican Republic. I am a product of that. Uh, my mother is Puerto Rican, my grandparents. Uh, they went to the east part of the island, La Romana, uh, at a time when there was this uh, economical depression in Puerto Rico. And American companies opened up uh, the doors to various um, countries, including um, Puerto Ricans, to go there and to work in the American industries that had settled there. Ida a Santo Domingo se trató de que mi papá, mi padre Juan María Ramírez, emigró a República Dominicana porque decía que la vida en República Dominicana eh, había trabajo y que era más económico, era más barata la vida. Y entonces, en el 1928, 5 de agosto, viajamos para República Dominicana en el barco Mary, que viajaban dos barcos a Puerto Rico llevando la caña que no se podía moler en el Central Romana a Guanica, el Central Guanica de Puerto Rico. Viajaban dos barcos, el Mary y el Don. Uno iba y otro venía. Y en el, en el Mary fue que nosotros venimos a República Dominicana. CUNY TV also documented uh, the Afro-American migration uh, to Samana. My name is Martha Wilmore, and I was born here in Santo Domingo, here in Samana, in this place called Barrio Wilmore.
I am of the fourth generation of the Afro-Americans that came in the 1824 to Samana. They came from different parts of the United States, but they all left out from Philadelphia in different groups. Some landed in, in the capital, a group landed in, in Porto Platte, and more than one group came to Samana. Between all the groups, there were more than 6,000. And the groups that landed here in Samana, we can find uh, 33 so names. They formed the, the, the church because they were sent by, by Richard Allen. Bishop Richard Allen set out those groups. But they came to Santo Domingo, to this island, because they were invited. They were invited by Boyer, which was the president then of, of Haiti. They offered them, when they came here, that they'd give them equal rights, give them land, but they would give of their culture and civilization to the people here in Santo Domingo. When they, when they came, they gave them all a metal. That metal they could have went back if they didn't like the, the way he. But they, they, most of them, they, when they felt uh, happy, they didn't pay attention to the metals. They let that get lost. And when they wanted like, to have the rights, they, the most of them, they throw away the metals and, and they couldn't go back with their identity. And in that way, they could have gave them the double nationality. But without the metals, they couldn't get it. We lost all, most all the contact with our relatives in the United States. And the, 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 the American government, how it don't, don't they, recognize this. I mean to say that we are American descendants came from American or African Americans, but we sustain that we are Dominican. Well, being Dominican is, is, is a state of mind, I think. It's a belief, it's a philosophy, it's our music, our culture our race, our faith. We're a people of faith. We are the only country that has um, the cross and the Bible in the center of, its, of, of, of our flag. Uh, and uh, because we are a people of faith. Uh, so that, I think that's what being Dominican is. Wherever there is a Dominican, no matter where he is, even if he's the only one there, I think that our country is, is there. <laughs> 